Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for our kickoff of the series, Revamping Your Network Management, The Ultimate Guide to Migrating from Cisco Prime. My name is Tom Cyberlick, and I help lead the wireless COE at Cisco, the Center of Excellence. Uh, and joining me are um, Praveen Shintala, who is a leader in the Campus Automation COE, uh, Chris Cha, who is an Engineering Product Manager, for DNA Center and Chip Jenkins, who's a TSA in our Wireless Center of Excellence as a uh, technical solutions architect. Thanks for joining us, folks. Um, today's session again is going to be focused on Cisco Prime infrastructure migration options, and it'll be a high level summary. Um, our subsequent sessions will focus on, you know, do a deep dive on each of these, uh, each of our options. So. On May 31st and on July 19th, and again, we will have 5 sessions that will run. We will repeat them starting on July 12th, um, but the, we will dive into prime migration tools and DNA center deployment options. We'll deep dive into our use cases and the benefits of Cisco DNA center. We will deep dive into the migration to cloud monitoring for catalyst and our last session will be prime migration to Meraki cloud. Um, all the recordings that we do for this and all of our sessions will be kept at our YouTube channel uh, at um, Unplugged Connectivity. Uh, so go out that and check out the recordings and you'll get a lot of other great content. Now, at the end of this, um, you know, or during the session, by the way, we will have Q&A. So we'll have a Q&A panelist on to answer your questions. Please ask your questions in the Q&A panel and we'll get onto them as soon as possible. Um, and then lastly, we have a survey that will pop up at the end of this. Your feedback is really, really important to us. So please take the time to fill out that survey and we will, uh, we will tweak and adjust um, based on the feedback and the comments you give us. We wanna make these webinars as good as we possibly can. Um, in the end, we will get move forward here with our uh, agenda and First of all, Chip is gonna take us through the introduction of terminology when it comes to prime migration. Um, we will get into prime migration options and those options being DNA Center on-prem and cloud, Meraki dashboard for catalyst and monitoring and Meraki dashboard uh, natively with full stack. And without further ado, Mr. Chip Jenkins out of Columbia, South Carolina, please take it away. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the intro. And listen, I just want to thank all of you that have gotten taken the time to get on today's call. And and, and I'm going to make an assumption when I when we built this slide deck, and I'm going to tell you that, that there was this was a team effort. Um, so we spent a lot of hours pulling this together with thinking of customers that have prime infrastructure and what are the options going to go. And we learned so look, and there can be a lot of confusion around this the uh, this subject matter in regards to how cloud and on-prem and physical virtual and so we we spent a lot of time contemplating and thinking about this slides and, and so there's this was really a bunch of us put together this information so we hopefully find it very informative the first thing hopefully everybody has already caught wind that Cisco has announced the end of life of prime infrastructure. We did that on March the 31st. And I think there's some real important dates for you to understand. Of course, let me go all the way to the right. The last day of support, September 28, 2028. So depending on your work cycle uh, on devices, when you need to make sure that this thing is off in your network, for Cisco, the last date of support is on the 28th. So on September 29th, you call Cisco Tax saying, I want to support, I have a problem with my prime infrastructure. You will hear Tax say, you need to upgrade. You need to move to either DNA Center or to uh, Meraki Dashboard. Now, I want to highlight two other uh, high level concerns when I've worked with customers regarding Cisco's end of life announcements. One is, our September 28th, 2025, our end of vulner security vulnerabilities. So after that date, if you happen to find or, or there's a report of a vulnerability with prime infrastructure, we will not be fixing that vulnerability, which may put you in a position where uh, you need to, to take an emergency action to, to pull prime out of your network. So just keep that date in mind that if you have a very high sensitivity to security, and there is a vulnerability, then you may need to have to take action. And the other one too is just contracts. So that's September 28, 2027. 
that uh, you make sure that if you're still running prime infrastructure and you want service, you might want to make sure that, that you get that um, your service contract done before the September 28th, 2027. So all that to say is that we still have some time. I don't want you to think that you've got to make a decision on an option about what you're going to do with your prime infrastructure today, but it is important to understand our time frame and what, uh, how, how you need to respond based on your environment. Now, why, what, what are the options here and, and why do you need to do it? Why does Cisco uh, actually do an end of life of prime infrastructure? Well, part of that is it really has run its course with its capability and the software and moving into uh, what I call a modern day monitoring and management tools. So the, what we're offering today with the tools that you're going to see is an enhancement to what you have with Prime. Now, I know, listen, I, I have a lot of customers that are doing a lot with Prime infrastructure. They're familiar with the application. They like the application. They love the reports, the information they can pull out of this tool. And listen, I, I'm an old school guy. Listen, this is how far back I go. I, when I start, before I came to Cisco, I was working uh, on a big, large Cisco network. I started with Cisco Works. So if, you, if those of you on this call that were doing Cisco Works and compare it to what we're doing with prime infrastructure, you know that this is a, a, a what has been a very, very good product for Cisco. Uh, and and it's, we've, we've come a long way, but it's time for it to retire. And, and what we have, the options available for you, is far superior to what you're going to do. Now, that doesn't mean there's a, a, this one-to-one -one that you'll be able to do exactly how you, what you did in Prime. You can do it in, in the dashboard or you can do it in, in DNA Center. There is going to be a learning curve. And, and so that's something that you need to anticipate. And hopefully we put you in a time frame where we don't put you in a state of emergency. Now, I do want to highlight because AI and... You know, artificial intelligence and machine learning is a big buzzword within our industry. And I, I, I did want to highlight this one feature because it's important to note that Cisco, in developing these tools, AI and ML have been a very important part of that. Uh, and, and so as you think about the transition and the power of these tools, AI and ML needs to be at the forefront of that. Now, let's talk about terminology. This slide came out as a result of our team effort to try to understand, you know, what these offers are and, and how we position these options. And, um, it, it, and so it, it's taken us a while to, to really put this together. And I think it's important that we understand some of these terms that we're going to use. And they may not be 100% line up with what you think, but I just want you as, as a participant that you understand how I want to use these terms in this slide deck. So, of course, cloud cloud networking. Oh, it's cloud networking's been around a long time. I, I, I've been in this business long enough to know if, of course, Cisco works tells you how long we've been around. But, you know, the, the, the whole idea of a colo where, you, where service providers out there would give you computing space or space in their racks. And so there were data centers that were built around this. So this is not something new, but I think how we define it today is very different than how we defined it 20, 25 years ago. So in this idea of cloud computing, it's, it's, it's something outside of your organization and it's hosted either in a pl public fashion, a private or a hybrid or both of those, but it is external to your organization. Uh, the next two definitions here are important for us to distinguish. Infrastructure as a service and software as a service. Uh, DNA Center is the example of infrastructure as a service. So it's still, you can run it and uh, Chris, who is our DNA expert on this call, is going to go in a little more details of, of the options that you have with deploying DNA Center. But just take note that uh, infrastructure as a service, it, the responsibility is still sits in your bucket to do upgrades, to initiate upgrades, to do your patches, to verify that your software actually did update. So all of that still rides on your shoulders. So whether it's on-prem in, in an appliance or it's in uh, AWS or it's in a private cloud with uh, VMware, when you initiate that upgrade, you're telling your 
DNA Center to go pull the code down, implement and load it, reboot, and then it's up to you to go in there and make sure everything is working to and functioning the way it's supposed to. Now let me move to SaaS. So SaaS, it's still a cloud version of that, but it's hosted in the cloud by a service provider. Now, and, and Meraki Dashboard is our example of a SaaS. With Meraki, you still control upgrades. So we're, we're not going to go in there and, and that you can. You can opt to automatically upgrade and let Cisco manage that. Most of the customers that I work with that do a lot of Meraki, they want to be notified that there is an upgrade. But, but when you hit the button to say to upgrade, that falls under under the service provider. In this case, Cisco is responsible for the upgrade, make sure it's successful, and make sure that your inventory and functionality of that software is operational. So you can see how it shifts the responsibilities. And so there's a, hopefully you can grab that distinction between infrastructure as a service and software as a service. Now let me drop down the last two definitions because this is going to be important for you to grasp um, because there is a distinct difference between monitoring and management. Monitoring, I can see the device, I know what's going on, I can see clients that are attached to it, and uh, there's information that I can render up to you so you can see the health and status of your network. Management offers up that same monitoring, level of monitoring, but when you need to implement or add or change a configuration, management is what you need. So monitoring, there is no management, you can't make any configuration changes with management. You do the monitoring and you can make changes and, and also initiate upgrades and, and uh, updates. Okay. With that said, let me move over and let's talk about our prime, uh, the options for prime uh, migration. There are three. So I'm going to start with option number one. This is if you are, and I'm going to assume everybody on this call that's listening is, is a prime user. If in your network you are all catalysts and you are accustomed to what we're doing in the caches and the features that we offer, you know, SD access is one of those where you're doing micro and mi uh, micro and micro segmentation. Um, you're doing scale uh, um, um, virtual routing. So all of those catalyst features and functionality that are complex. Uh, you want to stay with option one and migrate to Cisco DNA Center. And again, Chris is going to go more detail here, but I want to highlight that, that the option of doing a physical on-prem and a um, infrastructure as a service, that is available within DNA Center. Now, I want, let me shift over to option number two. This is for those customers who, who already have a hybrid network. So they've got part of the network is a catalyst. Another part of this is um Meraki and where I see this already in play is I've got a lot of healthcare customers there are a lot of retail customers where their corporate headquarters or their hospitals are all catalysts and their uh, retail stores or their doctor's offices are the Meraki side of that and so they're already accustomed to doing management from the Meraki dashboard and from the uh, prime infrastructure now, option two, you again, depending on the time frame, you can go ahead and, and t start moving your catalyst into a monitoring mode. So you can start getting yourself familiar with what we're doing in a, from a monitoring perspective of catalyst within your Meraki and get prepared to move to the ultimate, which is option three, where everything's being managed through your um, Meraki dashboard. So, the inter so Option number two is, is a, uh, an interim step to move you to option three. And again, the highlight here is that we're only monitoring a catalyst. We're not managing the catalyst. Now, highlight on, on option three, this is you, you're, you're either already a, a, a Meraki customer and you're already familiar with the dashboard and you're in good shape. The, those of you that, that are, have a catalyst environment and you're already thinking about moving to Meraki, then obviously option three is a, is a good pour for you. So as you build out your network and replace the catalyst with Meraki, you're already implementing the dashboard. I do want to highlight that bullet point that 
states that in the future, from a cloud-first solution, the Meraki dashboard is going to be our SaaS. So there is a vision within Cisco to mo monitor and manage Catalyst iOS XE devices. So that's coming, but it's in the future, and I can't give you a time frame on that. But I, I wanted to put this point in there for you to see and understand that, that Cisco eventually is going to move. Option 3 is going to continue to mature, and you will be able to manage uh, the uh, Catalyst iOS XE devices. So with that, I want to hand this over to Chris so he can start us off with uh, option number one from Prime to Cisco DNA Center. Before I hand it over to Chris, again, I want to remind everybody that as you look at these options, we have sessions that are coming that will do a far deeper dive than what you're going to experience here. So if, if you see that option one is the, your option, that's the one you want to cons only consider, then the, the next two sessions are going to be something that you want to put it as a priority in your schedule. And if, if you are looking at any part of, of a SaaS solution, then those last two sessions are going to be also important for you. And with that, Chris, I want to hand it over to you to talk to us about DNA Center. Thank you, Chip, for setting the stage. I'll briefly talk about DNA Center and provide an overview of the prime to DNA Center migration motion. As, as Chip mentioned, uh, there will be two subsequent sessions, session two and session three, I believe, where we'll, we will dive into more details. So DNA Center has been built specifically to manage your Cisco devices and uh, enterprise network and is a complete network management system. There is no easier way to manage and push software updates to your devices. You will depend on the automated security advisory alerts, um, that DNA Center will provide. You can look at end of life status and see what in your inventory is out of compliance and what status your hardware, software, and even your power modules are. There's a powerful AI ML engine that runs in the cloud and it provides assurance capabilities. For example, AI driven issues. It will observe your network and tell you what is out of the norm. It is like they have cloned you to monitor the network 24 seven. Another way we use AIML is to help you manage your network is AP performance advisories or AI RM, where DNA Center will observe the network for a two week or set time frame and will provide recommendations um, to better configure your wireless network. Uh, another capability um, is DNA Center's endpoint identification and policy monitoring that are very robust and it could be a product on its own. It monitors the endpoints, locks down the security, guaranteeing the QoS on important IoT endpoints. And you don't even need ICE to run endpoint identification. And for you customers that are implementing SD access, DNA Center is essential. Um, next, Man, many of our most important prime customers are running prime in their data centers already in a virtualized environment. And DNA center also has several deployment options. Um, that includes deploying it as a virtual appliance. Uh, with customers seeking cloud based solutions, we have created 2 different flavors, 1 that runs on the public cloud. And another 1 for the private cloud scenario. The virtual appliance on AWS is available now on AWS Marketplace, and the virtual appliance on ESXi is now an EFT or early field trials and is targeted to launch later this year. We have full feature parity with the on-prem appliances. Um, it's right now the medium offering and has the same spec. Uh, which is 44 core appliance and is able to support 25,000 endpoints and 5,000 devices. Um, the PID for is it's zero dollars, and you can buy the optional tech support for five thousand dollars per virtual appliance per year. However, for the cost for the licenses or the AWS. Hosting costs, of course, need to be paid by, by the customer. 
So Chris, real quick question for you. Sure. I know we're doing early field trials with the, the VMware. Uh, if there's a customer on the call that would like to, to participate in the EFT, is there room today or is that EFT full? It is pretty full. I have, I have a slide showing some of the enthusiasm that we have from <laughs> the field. Uh, we had over 100 plus requests and uh, it's it's one of the largest EFTs that we, we conducted and we have two waves of 30. So we have 60 customers. Um, the second phase is still, uh, imp I mean, it's going to be kicked off in a week or so. Um, no promises, but if you are, you know, if you're dying to participate, uh, please contact, uh, either me, uh, this group, or maybe your account manager. And, and then, yeah, maybe yeah then your account, just reach out to your account team and, and they know how to get a hold of us. And we'll, we'll see if we can't, uh, leverage our, our, our networking with the, uh, product manager for DNA Center, Chris, <laughs> to see if he can't get us in. But yeah, and just note too, if you've never done a field trial with, with Cisco, there is, we, we ask for your feedback. So there's a lot of, it's, it's a, it's a partnership. So don't think you just, you're kind of like getting the, uh, this, the, you're not getting it for free. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, we, we ask your help to give us to, um, test the product. So there's, we need your feedback. Um, so just keep that Absolutely. in mind. Absolutely. Yep. To make the product better and more polished and to mature it to, to, uh, to launch, uh, we definitely need your input. Yeah, we, we do a lot of testing on these products before they even go to EFT. EFT gives us an opportunity to put it in a, in a real environment for the real network with real, real um, networking. And so it gives us even a better insights into how the tool is, is working. So it's, it's an extraordinary, extraordinarily important part of our um, getting a product out the door before we, we make it a general availability. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, We're at, I'm yes. sorry, I, I, I jumped the bun here. Are you ready to go to the next one? Yeah, no, no worries. Absolutely. So, um, yes, yeah, so DNS Center Virtual Appliance on AWS is available now. Um, it's a screenshot of uh, of this uh, uh, on AWS Marketplace, and we have already twenty three commercial deployments, um, and we just did EFT. We finished EFT probably in February, and we launched it in April. And deployment can be done in seventy five minutes or less, which is amazing. And, uh, of course, the other, some of the other benefits are, um, you can use OPEX versus K KPEX and, um, the range is between 400 to $1,500 per month. And it varies because a different usage, um, different discounts available, uh, from, you know, per customer, as well as, you know, how you deploy it, whether manual or using the auto automated launch deployment. And some other highlights are, uh, it's MSP ready and allows partners to offer hosting or management services on top of that. And it's available in 15 different AWS regions with more coming in the future. Yeah, Chris, I'm excited. I got my first customer that, uh, is where I had to present DNA center and the, even our, our 9,800 wireless controller in AWS and they've already said we want to do a proof of concept because they're excited about it being in AWS. So I'm excited. I've got my first customer. So hopefully here in the next two weeks, I'll have a real life experience to be able to talk about this. Absolutely. And it's, and the list is growing. Um, yes. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I'm very hesitant usually to put anything on the, on the roadmap, but there are always questions. Hey, is this going to be on, you know, Azure or GCP or and so forth. And it is on the roadmap, but dates, of course, are always subject to change as well as um, the exact time frame is not known. And also a lot of customers have been asking around the vertical scale, whether up and down or down. So, but, and that is on the roadmap. 
And that, that brings up an interesting question too, Chris. If let's say I'm a, I decide that because I don't want to do an AWS, but I would like to do an Azure or, or somewhere else. But what, does it make sense then? Because I still have a, a mandate to do cloud. If I take it and run it in VMware uh, within my private cloud, and then when we come in and say Azure is re we're ready to support an Azure, and that's my my um, SaaS provider. Can I move? I mean, my my cloud provider. Is it easy to move from that VMware EXI into that uh, the <laughs> Azure? Um. I think some of these migration strategies and uh, path will be explored and to yeah. make it easier for our customers. I don't know whether we will develop tools, specific tools for those, but uh, we will try to ensure that that transition is as seamless as possible. Right. Um, hey, oh. Chris, we do have one question. Um, the question was in the Q and A, is there any timeline for DNA center in Azure that you've been talking about? That's perfect segue. <laughs> um, again, it is, it is, uh, in the very near next sort of, uh, initiative, but I cannot set any time, but it is definitely 1 of the highest asks. So we are definitely addressing it. Thank you. Sorry that I can't provide any more detail. But, and again, as I said, there was uh, a lot of uh, enthusiasm around the virtual appliance on ESXi and some initial feedback that we received from phase one is the quicker time to value, right? Um, there has been, I mean, to be honest, there are a lot of challenges around some of the installation and upgrades um, that our customers had. And uh, the virtual appliance, maybe due to the automation that we put in, as well as some of those time savings, we don't have to figure out the, the rack space, the physical things, as well as capacity planning. Some of these things are done much more quicker. So, um, Many have reported, you know, twice as fast as physical appliances to for the installation or getting that first use case uh, done from from start to finish is very quick. So again, a lot of people have been selected. Again, for phase two, there may be some slots. Um, so if you're interested, please contact us. So you will have a lot of questions, whether you're ready to move to DNS Center from Prime. How can you verify that uh, it will support their hardware devices or uh, what software is currently installed in your network? I mean, we have made a tremendous progress. We have 541 legacy devices that are supported, um, supposedly dating back at least to 2013. What about the use cases? I mean, um, you will have to change your company workflows uh, because you know some of these workflows and use cases are not supported in Cisco DNA Center. The same for reports. We have 34 of the most popular prime reports uh, in DNA Center, but many of them are not needed because of new functionality, such as config drift, site analytics, and, and much, much more. So, rather than looking through lots and lots of documentation that possibly can be out of date. Um, can you go to the next slide? <laughs> we yes. have, we have built a PDAR tool that takes the work out of your hand. It is a tool that runs on the prime infrastructure. And it identifies what you're running on the network in about 10 minutes. What, what type of reports you're using, what hardware is end of life in order to prepare you for migration. And what time of remediation steps you need to take to migrate to DNS Center. There isn't even an option to set up uh, DNS Center in a coexistent state with Prime. And there are tools to allow for data sharing between Prime and DNS Center so that data migration and config is done more seamlessly. So we have put together a comprehensive migration program 
that gives you confidence to upgrade to Cisco DNA Center uh, as painless as possible. And they support both high touch that range from white glove services to self service where you can listen to existing webinars or attend demo webinars that are held every week. And um, lastly, I want to provide some links to resources that will help you to get started on your migration journey. I think first, um, as a reminder, you should talk to your account team. They may actually, or they may nominate you for white glove services. And here are some other links that, uh, for example, that are accessible to the public, such as the prime migration communities page, YouTube links to how to install and run the PDOT tool and other presentations that uh, provide an overview and more detail around the prime migration. Yeah, and this might be a good place to plug uh, Cisco Live. I know that, that there's a session dedicated to prime migration to DNA Center. So if you happen to already signed up for uh, Cisco Live and this is a subject that's important to you, don't you know look in the catalog and make sure you register for that. Uh, or if you've not signed up for Cisco Live and this is an important one, sign up for Cisco Live. Uh, and, and just a little hint here, if 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 your budget can't cover it, then maybe you can, uh, you know, talk to your Cisco account manager and see about uh, some learning credits for you uh, to get you to Cisco Live. By the way, if you've never been to Cisco Live, for those that engineers, it is the premier um, place to get uh, the information from Cisco because these are these are engineers talking to engineers. And so it's a extremely valuable. So Cisco Live. I also want to get a plug. We have the next two sessions in this series are going to cover DNA Center. And we'll cover the information that you've already seen here, do a much deeper dive, and then even add some additional information that this overview can't go in that kind of detail. So don't forget about the, the, the two se other sessions that we have coming. Hey, Jeff, that, just I, to yeah, interrupt you here too. Uh, number one, we had a question. Are you going to email the links? Yeah, we will make sure that you have this presentation uh, with the links in it. Um, we will get that to you either on the YouTube channel where we posted and I'll make sure we get that, uh, emailed out to you. We do have your email address since you registered for this session. Uh, the second question we have is for Chris. Uh, the question is the DNA C VMs have the same scalability as the 44 core appliance. Is there any roadmap information when more scalability will be offered? Um, again, that, that was a. Second point in some of the VA roadmap that I um, put on. There's no exact time frame, but it is on a roadmap. We identified it as one of the big asks from our customers, uh, whether the scale going up or down. So there have been both requests. Mm. Uh, so it is definitely on, on our radar. Very good. Thanks, Chris. All right, let me, let's move now into uh, option number two, which we define as the cloud monitoring for catalysts. So when cloud monitoring for catalysts, so I'm gonna follow through this. So the, for organizations that have deployed both Meraki and catalyst devices and see the Meraki dashboard as the your NMS, then option two is really, uh, it should be a viable uh, or uh, an option to consider. Because now you can take some of those Meraki, I mean, sorry, sorry, some of the catalyst devices you have in your network and move those into a monitoring within your, your Meraki dashboard. So at least this, this initial step will give you the ability to see what's going on within your network. Um, the second point here I, I wanted to push is that if, if your cloud policy has a requirement that you move everything to a SaaS, so software as a service, then Meraki dashboard is your preferred direction. Uh, DNA Center will never be a SaaS. It will only be an uh, infrastructure as a service. It's only, only a, the SaaS solution that we're going to offer is the Meraki dashboard. I also want to highlight that, that with this option number two, that we only, oh, all the, you only have monitoring the catalyst devices. You can't do the management. And, and I put in here that you, you always have 
the option of CLI. And, and I have to, when I put this slide together, I was like, I'm going to put a picture of CLI. And it just, it warmed my heart because I am a CLI guy. I grew up on Cisco routing and switching. And back then, you know, I had Cisco works. I, mean, I do, but it was not nearly as, as easy of a application. So I always I had a lot of default into the command line. So I, when I went and Googled, Cisco CLI, I was so happy to see when I clicked on images, all these images are out there. So there's still a lot of CLI fans out there. Some of us old guys still love that we got CLI and still defer to that. But just know that if, if you get to a point where you have to retire prime infrastructure and DNA, I mean, the Meraki dashboard is your preferred network management platform. CLI is not going to go away for those catalyst devices, and you can still be able to manage it that way. And I'll highlight two. Option number two is simply, a, it really is an interim step to eventually move you to option number three, which is managing and monitoring Meraki devices and catalyst devices with the Meraki dashboard. So as we look at this a little bit deeper, and this is when we talk about cloud monitoring, specifically the SaaS, the I, the advantage that I've always seen with Morocco Dashboard is it's its simplicity, its uh, scalability, and, and the security that application has to offer, and all, as well as the APIs in our ecosystem. So there is, it is it, there's a tremendous amount of development with the Morocco Dashboard. So you can count that we're, it's only going to continue to mature. And when we look at it from a monitoring perspective, again, the idea is that we eventually want to get to in this interim state to get to the point where we can at least see everything in your network uh, from a view and, and so that you can see the health, do some troubleshooting, look at what's going on with the clients and the traffic that's being generated, as well as consolidate the, the device inventory so that uh, and, and monitor it as well as see a unified topology. So that's our vision for this first option number two in our development of the Meraki dashboard for catalyst devices. And it's important to note that today, the models that we support are the 9200, 9300, and the 9500. And again, what's missing here is our chassis-based catalyst switches, so the 94 and the 96. And then being a, a wireless technology solution architect, the, the 9800 wireless LAN controller is also not on this list. So as you are looking at option number two, it's gonna be important for you to understand what today we can monitor and what we can't. But again, those are on futures. You can count on that eventually you will be able to monitor those. Uh, and again, I'll highlight and I put it in red, there's no management, this is monitoring only. And with that, I'm gonna switch gears. Tom, we have any questions before I move to option number three? No, sir. We've got them all answered. Okay, great. Well, let me jump into here and let's talk about option number three. Um, now, some of y'all are going to look at bullet number one, and you're going to say how obvious that is. And I'm going to tell you that my mom always told me that I had a profound insight into the obvious. But those organizations that have already run in Meraki's full stack, well, you are already reliant on the Meraki dashboard for your network management system. There is no catalyst in the network. You've, you've deployed Meraki. That is your network management tool. You have to have a Meraki dashboard for you to be able to monitor and manage your network devices. Uh, but if you are looking at a SaaS and you see the advantages of the Meraki dashboard, but you do have catalysts, again, I want to go back to the time frame that Prime infrastructure from a Cisco supported solution is going to be in in September 2028. So we've got five years. If that's if, if that's how far you need to extend this, we have five years. There is so much has happened can happen in five years. Listen, I'm I've been doing this stuff for a long time, and I've watched technology. It feels like we're on a we're not on a linear trajectory here. We're on a on a, on a uh, analog, I mean, on a, a logarithmic trajectory here. So this conversation two, three, five years from now is going to be different. But I can tell you the vision for this is that Cisco's first cloud or cloud first solution 
it's going to mean that you will be able to manage your Cisco devices, Meraki or Catalyst, with the Meraki dashboard. When is that going to happen? I don't know, but that is our vision and that's our strategy. And that strategy could impact which option best fits your environment. So again, just talking about the, the dashboard itself, uh, the, talking about improved performance where it's always on, always learning, it, and you always, no matter where you are in the, net, in the world, you can get access to your dashboard, uh, the efficiencies that it has to offer for, for self-maintaining your networks, and the, again, the global reach, and the seamless connectivity with API-driven platforms and the eco. There's so much that our eco partners are building for the Meraki dashboard that there's huge advantages. Now, that's also true with DNA Center. So as you're weighing your options between DNA Center and Meraki dashboard, this may be a time where you want to reach out to your account team and have them work out a schedule with someone like myself. And there's a whole team of us that are prepared to have a one-to-one -one meeting with you to talk about through these options. And again, I'll also highlight all the upcoming sessions that are coming in. We have a whole session that talks about our cloud first solution, but let, real quick, just make sure you're, you for those of you who aren't familiar with the Meraki dashboard and what we're doing, this is a, a mature product. We have over 4 million uh, customer networks. Uh, we have the four nines of, of reliability. And it's, this is a mature product. And we have a strong handle on a SaaS solution with our Meraki dashboard. So I don't want you to have any trepidations about that application the concern here is what do you have in your network? What do you need to monitor and manage? And what you know, what's makes the best sense in, in regards to the level of features that you're running? Uh, easy converge. So, you know, again, the power of the platform where the uh, IoT and physical security. So there are, are some really neat options that are being implemented within DNA. I mean, within Meraki dashboard, I can keep these straight. Uh, again, Mark, these are just some real high-level um, slides. And again, I, I will redirect you. If, if option three is where you want to go, you want to make sure that you're signed up for those last two sessions that we're having to offer. And they're going to go in detail about how the Meraki platform can simplify. And that's always been my luck, what I love about the dashboard. It really does simplify your management and your monitoring of your devices. And it's also secure, and, and again, with the implementation of artificial intelligence and machine learning, it has become extraordinarily informative of what it can provide from a troubleshooting and health of your network. I do want to highlight, this is the, the, the only product slide that I'm going to put in here. And again, you, you, the, it, it's important to see where Cisco is moving. But with these, the, the latest access points that we've added, to our portfolio, which are Wi-Fi 6 access points, our 9162, 9164, and 9166 are, are really the first product that Cisco is producing where you can order it as a Cisco access point or as a Meraki access point. So you can order this as one of those two personas. Uh, if you, and you, there is, a workflow that allows you so that if you bought a, uh, and I'll use the example of a healthcare who's got uh, doctor's offices that are using Meraki and they've got hospitals that are using Cisco. Uh, and this allows them to choose a, one of these access points that they can run in either network, the hospitals or in the doctor's offices. And if they happen to need to, to, implement more APs in a certain area, and they have an inventory of those access points, well, they can pull those, and if it's in the, if, if that access point needs to go in a hospital, but it was ordered as a Meraki persona, we can move that from Meraki and shift it to a, uh, for your, for your catalyst. And there's a workflow to do all that, um, but, but you have those options to be able to move back and forth. Now, I want to put a caveat to it, that workflow is not something that you want to always do. 
you know, the, the goal here is to be strategic in what you purchase and where those products are going. But in those instances where your back is against the wall and you have to act now, you do have that option to do that. And if this is something that that's, you would like to further dig into, reach out to your account team and we can go in further details about that. So I'm about to wrap up. And I wanted to wrap up to make sure again that you see this slide and the three options as they're lined up together. So option one, again, you're a prime user, have it catalyst only. You've rolled out some, uh, all the features and functionality or, or some of those feature functionalities, or you plan on rolling out those features and functionalities, then DNA center may be the best op option, will be the best option for you, whether that's an on-prem or an infrastructure as a service. Option two gives, you the, the ability to start leveraging the Meraki dashboard to monitor parts of your Catalyst network today. And so if you're saying, I, I want to do a SaaS, I, I want the Meraki dashboard, but I still have Catalyst hardware, then this will be a great interim step for you to start getting familiar with the Meraki dashboard as a monitoring tool until you eventually Either we move the dashboard to, monitor, to be able to monitor and manage Catalyst devices, or in the case where you're actually retiring your Catalyst and moving to the Meraki dashboard, I mean, the, the Meraki full stack. Again, option two gives you that interim step, which eventually will lead you to option number three, where you are monitoring your devices using the Meraki dashboard as a SaaS. Again, today, it's only Meraki full stack. Um, and if, but eventually we're going to be able to, to provide management and monitoring services to Catalyst iOS XE devices with the Meraki dashboard. And with that, I will hand it back over to Tom. Thanks, Chip. Thank you for a great presentation. And Chris, thank you for a great presentation. Really appreciate it. Um, again, um, you know, Chip reiterated several times all the different sessions we have. Um, we will again be running these twice um, and all those recordings will be posted at our YouTube channel, uh, the YouTube channel being Unplugged Connectivity. Uh, again, as you sign off this, please fill out the survey and give us your feedback on how we can improve these. We, we really do, you know, prioritize that, that feedback and we will make those adjustments as necessary. And with that, I want to thank you all for attending. Thanks for spending, uh, you know, 40, 48 minutes with us. We really appreciate it and hope you got a lot out of it. Take care. Thank you all.